What do you think about the intergenerational connection that this film seems to be making? Well, it's really important to me that um, that the film helped facilitate conversation, particularly between younger gay men and men who lived through the epidemic. I think there's so many young men who really know nothing at all about that time and are curious about it. I, I feel that as time goes on, I hear more and more curiosity from younger men. And there's a reticence of, on their part to ask questions because they don't know what's okay to ask and what's, okay not, what's not okay to ask. And I think that older gay men have been reticent to revisit those years and also because they don't want to bring other people down by talking about heavy subject matter. It's very akin to the Holocaust, where for 30 years the people who lived through the Holocaust didn't ever talk about it and nobody ever asked them anything. So I think that there is a moment that's, that's happening now where the generation that lived through it is realizing that it needs to process its experience, it needs to talk about uh, what happened and also you know, acknowledge we lived through this. We had this experience and it was enormous and that younger men can really benefit from hearing those stories to help understand not only where we are in relationship to HIV specifically, but also where we are as, as gay men um, and gay women too, I mean, in relationship to the larger political issues. The epidemic changed everything. Well, actually, you mentioned that the, the movement for marriage would not have happened, you, do, you don't think, unless this had happened first. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, I think in the in the 70s, you know, there was this incredible explosion of gay sexuality, of gay political activism, and it's still within a very kind of a hostile context of a culture that still really didn't uh, like us. And there was a tremendous amount of separation, particularly between the men's and women's communities in those years. There was much more, women were much more identified with, um, with feminism and with the women's movement. And, you know, a lot of men were more sexist and... Um, but the, I think the coming together of women and men was a very powerful change in our community. And I also think that we just, so many people were forced out of the closet by the AIDS epidemic. People found out that their priest's son was gay because he died of AIDS. So it, the process of coming out was, society-wise, was rapidly increased because of the AIDS epidemic. And it was not a great way, but we really found our strength through fighting for our lives and demanding that we be taken seriously. A couple people in the film also speak that the way the outer world perceived us really changed. Instead of just being, you know, wild party people, all of a sudden we were the world's ultimate caregivers. And I think that we really altered the way society deals with illness, with death and dying. Uh, you know, so in so many ways we became who we are. People forget that the AIDS epidemic started 11 years after Stonewall. I mean, we were just beginning to find who we were as a people and all of a sudden this thing comes that starts killing us through our sexuality. So we were really forced to introspect and to, to reaffirm who we are and that we had a right to be who we are and that our sexuality itself was not a disease, but that there was a virus that was killing us. And it sort of forced us to become our best selves. Uh, and uh, it's, an, it's important that we understand that. The AIDS epidemic is the biggest piece of gay history since Stonewall. And uh, it, that story needs to be understood and remembered. If there's one scene or one incident in your film that you want people to walk away with, or that in fact struck you, something you cried about in the editing room, what would that be? There's different things in the film that impact me in different ways, that some that make me cry and some that really move me in a positive way. I think the most important line in the movie, on some level, at the end of the film, Eileen says, I don't have to worry when I'm old and looking back at my life that I haven't done anything. I just think, well, that, if all of us lived that way, if all of us, as we're living our lives, thinking, am I doing something that I'm going to be proud of? Or have I ever done anything that I'm going to be proud of when I die? And that, to me, is the essence of what we see on screen. It's people rising to the occasion, contributing to their community, and really just giving of themselves in the purest and most passionate way. That to me is the, the, is the most important message out of the film. So that's what you want people to walk out of the theater feeling, empowered to do something? Well, it's one of many things. I mean, I want, I'm, I'm hoping that the film, just on a, on a more metaphoric level, allows people to honor their emotions and to realize how beautiful it is to engage with feelings, even if they're painful, that that's really the power of, of human existence is to, is to engage with the difficulties and the joys of life and realize that they're all 
inseparable, that beauty can emerge out of horror. Uh, I mean, there's a million messages, and I hope that everybody finds the message that is appropriate to them. Thank you very much. Thank you for the film. It was My extraordinary. Pleasure.